On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to install the Creality Filament Runout Sensor on the Ender 3 V3 SE. And I'm showing you this because their instructions have a lot of errors. I'll explain it all on today's Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. The Ender 3 V3 SE is a great little printer and it's still popular because just this one listing on Amazon sold over 300 units in one month. One feature it's missing is a filament runout sensor and you can get one for $14 on Amazon. But what you need is good instructions and they don't give them to you. There's flaws in their manual. So let me show you how to do it, plus a few tricks. Step one is disconnect power and then flip it on its side like this because we need to take the bottom off. There's eight screws you need to remove to take this panel off and for that you'll need a two millimeter Allen wrench. I'll take the first one off in the center and then really just go around the sides. So I'll take one from the top and then from the bottom and then from the front. Now, you don't have to do them in this order, but I do this so I can see if th something's rubbing against it or something's gonna pop and where that is. So then I finish off by just going around the corners, take those off, and once the last one's out, then I can pull this panel off, and behind it is a fan we need to disconnect. Now, it should just pull out. There might be a little hot glue on it, but it should break loose. Then there's also this cable here that's in this metal slot. You need to slide that off. Now this panel can be set aside. And now you can get to the control board of the printer. And speaking of control boards or circuit boards, you might want to check out our sponsor, PCBWay.com, where you can get 10 circuit boards for 5 bucks plus shipping. And they have a Gerber viewer, so you can load up your Gerber files after you design your circuit board. Or this one I actually found online that someone was sharing, so I could look at the top, bottom, and different layers. And if you don't need that, they got CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. So they support the channel, so please support them, pcbway.com. Now here's where a major flaw shows up in Creality's instructions. They say to connect to this connector for the runout sensor right here, this three-pin connector. But if you look at the connector that they include on their cable, it's a four-pin connector. I'm supposed to put a four-pin connector into a three-pin socket? Nope, because look at the board here. It shows these three connectors on the side, and there's really only two. And this one is the only four-pin connector, and it turns out that's where the filament sensor goes. So here's the piece that goes into the board, and then it connects to this extension. That extension then goes up to the sensor at the top of the printer and connects in here. So we need to install this wire. There's two rails on the side of the connector, and that slides into the slots of the connector on the board, and now it's ready to go. So we're gonna disconnect the extension here because the extension is recommended to go through the hollow shell of this upright. And there's a little hole here where it's supposed to pop out. The problem is the hole's so small, you can't get the white connector, which is really what you wanna push through. And the black connector will only go in one direction. Like it stops here, but if I flip it 90 degrees, it slides right in. But I need the wire coming the other direction to connect to the other harness. So I'm gonna to have to feed it from the top down into that channel. And to do that, I have to take this cover off on top with these six screws and lift it off. The channel is underneath here. And I also gotta change this bracket because they have a new bracket with a mount for the filament sensor. So let's take that off first. If you don't wanna do all that, there is this hole with a knockout. You knock that thing out, you can run the wires up through it. It's not as clean, but it's easier. Take off the filament spool bracket. You'll need a three millimeter Allen wrench. Just take those two screws off. There's threaded holes already in this bracket, so it's pretty easy. No T-nuts to worry about. Set that aside, and we also need to take the spool holder off. You just twist it till the pins line up and slide it out. Now there's three screws on each side, and you'll need a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to take these out. And they're a little bit long. They're not short screws. So take those three out, and then move to the other side. Take the other side out, and this bracket should lift right off. Now, there's bearings underneath this that are holding these threaded rods with a washer on top. So don't lose any of that when you take this off. Just set this thing aside. And now you can run the wire, black connector first, all the way into the channel until you feel it bottom out. And then what I did is I used some needle nose tweezers and I pushed from the other side as I guided it with the tweezers and then I grabbed it with a needle nose pliers and finished pulling it out and then I could connect it to the harness that's connected to the board and then push it back in and then tie everything up with a tie strap so it was nice and neat. Now what I couldn't see is where this wire would come out of this top bracket because this plastic triangle area where it comes through sits flat against the metal. So if you bring it out the front, it's gonna get crushed. 
I wanted to bring it out the side here, but this wall is blocking it. So I needed to modify this thing so I could get the wire to come out to the side. And so what I did is I just took some side cutters and I cut that wall out. It was pretty easy to do. I don't think this affects anything structurally. And I just clipped both sides and then I took, a, again, a needle nose pliers and I just pulled that piece out. And now I could route the cable through there. So I bent the wire over where I want it to come out. Then I put the bracket on top and I could tell as I slid this in, it was not interfering with the wire. There was no interference whatsoever. So then I tightened down the screws, first on the one side where the wire was, then the other side, and I was real careful, but I could wiggle the wire and move it. It was not pinched at all. The next step was to install the spool holder bracket with the two screws and a three millimeter Allen wrench, then twist on the spool holder, opposite of the way we took it off. Once that was in place, now we need to mount the sensor and the instructions here aren't too bad. You need to mount the sensor to a flat plate and for that you need a two millimeter Allen wrench. These long screws go into the plate and then the other side of the plate is the pivot. Now for the rest of it you'll need 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. There's a little spacer. I put it on top first and then shot the screw through and then just spun the 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench and if you get it right, this thing should just pivot around. And then there's another screw with the spacer. You put that in the other side of the angled bracket. And then that goes into the spool holder bracket that we just put on the top. And once you get that screw in place, the filament sensor is mounted. So all we need to do now is connect the harness. Now I just brought the wire around like this and connected it to the sensor, but I'd like to find a 3D print or I'll end up making a 3D print that goes underneath that cross beam and hides the wire. If anyone knows of one that exists, let me know in the comments below. Now we're ready to install the bottom plate again and just slide the ribbon cable into its slot, connect the fan, and now you can lift the panel up into place. Watch these arms that are bent 90 degrees, make sure they fit, and also the LCD cable, make sure that's in its slot. You don't want to pinch any wires. And then I started with the screw on top and it worked my way around, opposite of the way I took it off, that way I can feel if I'm pinching anything. Everything went together pretty smooth. And the last screw I did was the first one I took out, and that was the center screw. Now I'm ready to try it out, so I fed some filament, some PLA filament into the printer and started printing a CHEP cube. And then I cut the filament to see if this is going to work. And once it got to that point, it sensed it and said filament run out. The head moved to the side, the extruder head, and paused right there. And then it gave me a warning that the filament had run out. And then I need to reload. I was able to just go to the extruder, pull the filament out. And then I could feed a new filament into the filament sensor, down into the extruder, and it sensed it. So it said, has it been reloaded? Click confirm. I click confirm, and then it went back to printing. So the head moved back, started printing the CHEP cube again. So I'm happy with the results. It works really well, and I didn't have to install any new firmware. But I don't like the instructions. So hopefully this video will help you if you try to install one of these on your Ender 3 V3 SE. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters, and if you need anything, contact me through the Patreon messaging, and I'll try to help you out. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.